Hello everyone and uh, welcome to a new interview with Lois Kruidenier. Um, Lois is an actress from Rotterdam. She's a mom. She has a beautiful Instagram and uh, she's a poet. And a lot of people probably know her from, uh, from that. And she has a new release because she wrote her first children's book. Yes, I uh, did. Yes. Laat mij maar even. Congratulations on the new book. Thank Lois. you very much. Thank and it's you. been going well so far. Yes, uh, got a nice, uh, a lot of nice replies. It's just a pre-sale yet, so we're waiting on the arrival of the books, but um, so far so good. Super exciting. Yeah. yeah. And how was it that you went from acting? Obviously, you went and studied acting, you were in the theatre. How, 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 was the tra- how did the transition happen from acting into writing? And where did your love of poetry begin? Yeah, um, well, first of all, uh, after I finished acting school, I immediately started uh, directing. Mm-hmm. Um, I think uh, putting myself on stage was always something um, that I liked and hated at the same time. So it was very a toxic relationship uh, with acting. And I started figuring out that I liked um, to direct more and I liked uh, telling other people what to do more than <laughs> that people told me what I had to do. So that <laughs> is like a story of my life. Um And um, when my first daughter was born, um, I felt like the need to change the world and um, the need to stay in the um, uh, in, in 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 the world as it is now and all its troubles it it kind of went away and I wanted to focus more on on my little one than on everything around it. Um, so that's when I stopped with uh, directing the place that I was doing. Um, and I just like being a mom at that time. I like working in, um, restaurants because it was just with the hands. And uh, when you're at work, you're at work. And when you're home, being present yeah. and in yes. the moment. Yes. You don't take your home, uh, you, you don't take your work home with you when you work in, uh, in restaurants or in bars. But then I started write, writing again. Well, I never stopped writing because it's just for me, it's like, um, my way of, um, Pulling out my soul, understanding my own soul. Mm-hmm. So I need to write to 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 understand and to feel and to um, how do you say uh, express yourself? Yes, express myself, but also um, explain to myself why I feel or why I do what I do. And when I um, became a mom, I started writing on Instagram about uh, what I was feeling, what I was. Uh, uh, going through and people <laughs> find it, found it, uh, interesting, found it a uh, beautiful, found, uh, they found recognition in it. Um, and that's how I discovered that the art that I always was meant to make, um, wasn't only, um, a place on just theater. Mm. I could also make art by writing, which is, um, well, the thing I always wanted the most, mm. but never thought I could. And now I know I can <laughs> because beautiful. I just did it. <laughs> That's how it, how it all went. Wonderful. Yeah. And we've been reading, obviously, a lot of your Instagram and your poetry and you talk a lot about the, in there that making mistakes are okay, um, acknowledging that all all emotions and feelings are valid um, and that they're all part of being a human being. And for me, when I hear those things, it really speaks to forgiveness. You forgive yourself for being a human being and 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 for experiencing all of the greys of being a human being. And I'm wondering what are the big moments of forgiveness that you've had to go through in your life in order to get to that point where you're able to communicate that so beautifully to others? Oh, that's... Um Pretty uh, deep question. Deep question, but I like it. Um, well, I think um, I started co- becoming very aware about forgiveness, forgiveness, and forgiving myself um, when I became a mother. Uh, because what I never knew was that motherhood comes, or maybe parenthood, I don't know. But for me, motherhood comes with a lot of guilt mm-hmm. all the time. Uh, which ne- no one ever told me, <laughs> no. but, uh, when I, when I experienced it, uh, 
I, I everyone, all the mothers around me uh, also experienced it. So um, that's when I became very aware about how uh, important it is to to uh, allow yourself to feel that way. Uh, allow yourself to express uh, that you're feeling that way and allow uh, yourself to forgive it, to forgive yourself about the guilt, about wanting to work or maybe not wanting to work, uh, about um, wanting a second child, not have, wanting to have a second child, not being able to, to, to become pregnant again, not being able to enjoy mom life or not being able to enjoy your social life. There's always something that you feel guilty about. Um Yes, and um, for me, by by writing about it and putting it into words, I can say to myself, "It's okay. This is just mm-hmm. yes. Yeah. This is just you living your life the way you sh- it's meant to be." Mm-hmm. And um, yeah, don't be too hard on yourself. Yeah, yeah. I think there was a research study done. Um, I believe it was at Berkeley University, and they discovered that there are actually twenty seven different human emotions and you know there's 27 different human emotions because they are actually all valid human emotions and we're not designed to be happy all the time or to be guilty all the time or to be sad all the time in fact they all exist to balance each other out and one wouldn't exist without the other and so I love your writing because it really portrays that but um you also in your Instagram you 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 have this persona that you're very tough. I don't know if that's just me that, that I feel that when I looked at your Instagram and then when I met you today for the first time in person, you were so soft. <laughs> in a beautiful way, in a beautifully <laughs> feminine way. Probably also and more honest, like you. Uh, yeah, you put the words like out there, like very, very honest. And that's <laughs> super nice. <laughs> and then, But then sometimes you maybe also... Um, have people who find that hard to read. Yes, definitely. Yes, definitely. And um, it's funny because uh, it, very rarely I feel myself because sometimes when I need to exp- express something and writing is not enough, then I feel myself and I put it in stories. And every time I do that, people are like, whoa, you speak so soft and so sweet. And I never expected it. Yeah. And the first couple of times that people told me that, I was like, but is this a compliment or not? Uh, but then I understood, like, it's okay. It's, I, I, I write with, uh, I write with brutal honesty. That's just how I write. And, uh, when you do that, when you, uh, dare to be brutally honest with yourself and also with people around you, sometimes the honesty doesn't really s- stick with people, but the brutalness does. Um, so that's why some, a lot of people find my in my words they find me uh, harsh and, and 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 tough and maybe also in the, the the pictures i post i like the i like the ones where i'm of course as we all do in my comfort zone mm. and my comfort zone was always a, a tough girl from rather than you know you yeah. had to be tough and motherhood um, made me more soft uh and I like that. I love that, but not always. So sometimes you want to put the mask on. Um, but I am, uh, I'm, I'm such an, uh, emotional person. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, um, uh, what, what, what you said is, it's definitely true that some, I get, I get a lot of a positive response, but also a lot of negative uh, response. Um, and just the other day, someone told me like, I, I don't think it's weird that people not always uh, are able to handle your kind of honesty because you put light on things that not everyone want to um, put light on at, with themselves, you know? And um, yeah. some people aren't ready to acknowledge that about life or about yes, themselves just they aren't yet. Ready and they that's still okay. want to have the rosy tinted glasses yes. on. And yes, but, but, but then I, all, I also try to... Um, uh, keep telling myself like it's not it's not it's everyone has their own timing mm-hmm. yeah. I cannot expect people to all be there where I am because it also took me a while and I'm not there where someone else is you know so yeah it's always a path yes and you always have to be like kind try to be kind to to everyone and to their own 
situation. Uh, situation and their own path in life, you know. Yeah. And so we see these images of you as a mother being very tender with your children, and then we see these images of you in your lingerie, like a hot boss babe. And Sex symbol. <laughs> what advice yeah. would you give to women about being able to bring the, that duality into the one? Because I know often women feel when they become a mother that that other sexy yes. side of them drops yes. away. We forget that mothers are also hot Horny, hot mamas. <laughs> sexy human beings, you know? Well, they had children somehow, you yes, know? Yes, <laughs> yes. But for me as well, uh, when, when, the, when, you know, they're still very young, but when the youngest was, was like just born, sex, uh, it, it, it became something, it wasn't for the house or something. Like, it's weird because then where, it, where yeah. else? <laughs> but, uh, you know, you're, you, you find, you have to find your 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 your, your womanhood, your womanhood. Uh, you have to refine it after you become a mother. Maybe not everyone, but most of the my friends and people I I speak. Yes, we we became we become these mothers, and people think that like moms have to be um, uh, sweet and and nurturing and uh, with a lot of patience, but. I'm not always that. I'm not always patient. I'm not always sweet. I'm sometimes I don't want to be nurturing. You are because you have to. But uh, the side of me that likes to uh, get drunk in a club, uh, dance on the bar, uh, take guys home. You know, that's that side of me. I don't. I won't because I'm married and I'm happily <laughs> married. But that side of me still belongs to me. Yeah. It makes me. And, uh, the woman I am, and I, it makes me the woman I like. I like to be yeah. when I give myself the space to um, let her be, let me be the woman I, I like to be. I'm the, I'm a better mother. Yeah. So it's it, 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 yes, the two exist together yes. for each yes. other. They exactly. balance each other out. Yes, exactly. Mm-hmm. And just the fact that we are all uh, women, and women are allowed to uh, be sexy, be seen. Um, we're still that when we're moms and it doesn't have to be for everyone you know but I like myself in lingerie putting myself out there I like it I love it 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 gives me a good feeling uh it gives me a good feeling because people um I tell me they are getting getting inspired by it you know so so That's I, why we wanted you here today. Yeah, so I'm sure. Because like, very thank you. <laughs> we, we are not we, we are not mothers, but we were also in, or we are also really inspired by what you write, yes, how thanks. you like yeah. position yourself, That's and nice. yeah, how you learn to love yeah. yourself, how you are. And thank you. Yeah, sometimes I forget that are a lot of the, the the followers that I I have right now. They're not all moms. Sometimes okay. I forget because I got a lot of. Uh, messages from girls like maybe in their 20s and they tell me um, they also uh, like the way I portray myself into uh, self-loving or just you know uh, being who you, who you want to be being who you and gives me it, the first time I realized that it gave me such a good feeling because I thought I was only a mother yeah. There was this moment I thought, okay, so now I'm just this mom and I get to write about mom stuff and that's all there is. And hang and, out with moms. Yeah, yeah. and now I'm, I'm, I'm realizing like, no, there's just this all, whole nother part of me that also um, people yeah, like to hear about or um, like to read about. So, yeah, because yeah. I... There's actually one poem that I sent to a lot of my friends and none of them have actually children. It's yeah. the one about uh, just fuck up, take that selfie, yes. post it, yes. but own that it. That one, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I wrote it for International Women's Day. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And uh, really yeah, good. thanks. Thank you. So when did your love of lingerie begin? <laughs> um, well, um, it, um, when I was like... Uh, in my 20s early 20s also, always when I went to the club I like just wearing a body a body and then a jeans mm. so I think that's when it began 
And um, it's a great look for you. Thank yeah. you. <laughs> <laughs> the big with the cigarettes. Yeah, um, <laughs> yeah, yeah. So that's really like uh, the Lois I uh, like to bring out again right now because now my oh, my eldest is four and my youngest is one and a half, and I was like, hmm. I need to I need to get that that rough sexy vibe back because it, it gives me so much energy and around the second lockdown lockdown I was very low on energy and I was also kind of in a depressive state mm-hmm. so I just went online uh, searching for the nicest uh, lacy bodies I could find and I ordered them all and I <laughs> just could hang out in lingerie yeah, just I put to, them yeah, on nice. with my jeans just <laughs> yeah. in, in the house just hanging out you know just Owning it. Yeah, just dancing. Put your favorite playlist on. Exactly, just <laughs> dancing in front of the mirror, just m- making pictures of myself, and it worked. Uh, you felt better. I felt better. And um, yeah, so now um, a lot of the times I just wear it underneath, and I just know, like, I'm wearing this, and no- nobody knows, but I know, and yeah. it feels good, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. What would your motto be? Your personal motto or tagline? <laughs> you had to give yourself one. Um, yeah, that's that's a difficult one. But I, um, what I say the most, and let me just say it in Dutch, then I'll say it in English: is um, kwetsbaarheid is kracht. So being vulnerable is the most powerful thing uh, you could be, you could do. Yeah. Uh, that's uh, for me. It, it it says a lot about how I am, how I am. It says a lot about how where I want to learn in life. Um, like, yeah, that's it. Being vulnerable is the most powerful thing you could ever do. Yeah, it's beautiful. I think that you are the embodiment of that motto. So Thank you very yeah. much. <laughs> I think it's time to talk beauty. Go for it. Right. Definitely. So, of course, yeah, we are we are from Nourish and um, yeah, you are also a customer of us. So um, we always ask, like, when did you decide that you wanted to use clean beauty products? Um, well, I think I decided because of your um, account and your web shop. Oh. So I wasn't really, yeah, I wasn't really looking. Uh, just le- just to be honest, I wasn't that green. Mm-hmm. I was just looking for products that um, were best uh, working for me. And um, before that, I was looking for products that weren't that expensive because I was just a student yeah. and didn't have the money. We and, all had that phase. Yeah. And yeah. then after I, um, uh, after my um, first daughter was born, I was sweating so much and I was smelling so so bad. I, I, sm- I smelled myself. So I was looking for a good deodorant, but because I was also breastfeeding, I didn't want to use like the chemical psh, psh, uh, mm. deodorant. And that's when I uh, got um, uh, at your account, at your web shop, and I found this this deodorant that you don't have right now, but it still it's looks so like, quality, uh, yeah. like the yeah. one you do. The black chicken yes. you have now. Yes, yeah. and I'm also going to use that now. Um, and I was like hooked. It was, it was so good because I never experienced the fact that you still keep on sweating, which is a good thing because it's a healthy thing, but you don't smell. And I was just, I was blown away because it was so good. And I was looking for it for a long time. And I also tried a lot of, um, uh, products that didn't work. So then I, Yes, then I read about your, 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 your post and about, uh, clean beauty products, clean hair products. Then I started, stopped using Andre Lon and started using Sans, you know, so that was great. And first of all, it was not great because my hair was always like greasy, but then I got over that. Once it detoxed. Yeah, yeah. So I think maybe it wasn't like a personal, like this, this, this personal choice, but it was more, I just learned from what I was reading on your uh, Instagram account. And yeah, that made me say like, okay, so this is not only better for my skin, but it's also better for the environment and for like the world. So all here for that. We often find with choices as well, one healthy decision, whether it be for yourself, for your community, for the planet, it it has a flow on effect. And one leads into another, which leads into another. And before you know it, you've, 
made a big transition without having to make a big transition. So mm-hmm. we really advise one step at a time yeah. for anyone wanting to make the switch. So that's perfect that that was the journey for you. In, yeah, in, definitely. Yeah. General in life, I yeah. think, with every switch, one step at a time. Yeah, yeah. I do too. Uh, just the other day, someone was very negative to a person on Instagram who is a vegan, but she she ordered or she was wearing shoes with the with leather or something right. and she and the, the the person was very aggressive reacting like how can you be vegan when you and of course you can say a lot of things but i prefer like uh, 1 million people trying to do than 50 people doing it perfect you know Absolutely. why why only oh, why only celebrate the ones who do it perfectly because yeah. That's hard, you know. And no one is doing it's it. It's hard no, and no there's no such thing yes. and it's unrealistic. And as someone who's worked in healthcare for 15 years, often those kinds of desire to become so strict about something actually becomes a very unhealthy compulsion. Yeah. Um, yeah. And it actually ends up being the opposite than, than what they'd set out yeah. for it to be. Yeah. But, yeah, anyway. Okay, last question. For last us. question. What's your favourite nourish product? Oh, do you have one? So many. <laughs> <laughs> well, um, I uh, will never stop using um, the oat milk uh, foundation from Era Perez. I will mm. never. <laughs> um, and I also, also because I cannot, I cannot name one. That's too. That's too hard. I have to say, say two. And the Kwandong Booster yeah. Serum, the green one. <laughs> yeah. That's just like a smoothie for your face or something. Like, uh, yeah, I, I love it. Yeah, I love that one. Beautiful yeah, serum. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, great choices. Well done. Thank you. Well, thank you for being here today and for all the beautiful pictures we were taking of you and for the super inspiring interview. Thank you, ladies. And uh, two more adventures yes. together. Yeah, I would say. I would love to. Excellent. Thank okay, you. thank you for tuning in, everyone. And we hope to see you all soon. Big love. Bye.